Now chapter 4. As they were speaking to the people, answering questions, no doubt, how that happened? Well, Jesus heals. Same message I'm giving you. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to them. Now, the Sadducees, their thinking was worse than even the Pharisees. You do know the difference, don't you? The, the Pharisees believed all the miracles of the Old Testament, but they did not believe that Jesus could heal. But the Sadducees didn't even believe in the miracles of the Old Testament. They would say, well, it is some, this meant that, and this meant that, and they would symbolize the miracles. People do that today. They water them down. Well, it doesn't really mean that happened. Noah really didn't get into an ark with it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. How do I know? Because the Bible says so. Jonah didn't really get swallowed by a whale. Yes, he it, I don't know whether it was a whale. It just says a great fish. But whatever kind of fish it was, God had prepared that fish to hold Jonah for that time. And it really happened. Peter did walk on the water. These aren't symbolic of, yes, if you grow to a certain point in Christ, you'll feel like you're walking on the water. No, no, that's, he walked on H2O. He walked on water. And so it was that the Sadducees, who didn't even believe in the miracles of the Old Testament, come and captain of the temple guard comes being greatly disturbed because they were teaching the people that is, Peter and John were, were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. <laughs> what they were saying is, Jesus Christ didn't just die on that cross. He rose. And he's in heaven. And he's empowered us with the baptism of the Holy Spirit to move in this power that releases people from their sin. But I want to say to you, too, that in this healing of the uh, men at the beautiful gate, it's important to understand that this was typical of the healings that were going on. Um, Luke says, let me see if I can find it. I may not be able to, but I can quote it if, uh, if I don't find it. Oh, yeah, here. Uh, here's from John. This will do. And there were also many other things which Jesus did, which if they were written in detail... I suppose that even the world itself would not contain the books that would be written. So understand that what we're seeing here is something that is typical of the healings that took place. That was one of them that definitely happened. And I'm sure this one was happened to lead into the next part that takes place in chapter 4. But uh, please understand that it, there were so many, 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 many. How long do I have to say that? There were so many miracles of healing that took place that we don't have any record of. But this is just typical of it. How big would the book be? I don't know. But he says, couldn't contain it. You just couldn't contain all the writing of all the things he did. You, you remember, I, I repeat, that we have about 18 days of Jesus' life in the three and a half years that he lived. What did he do in all those others? We see what he did by the typical things that are recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now, and they laid hands on them. Oh, I, I got it. And, and the temple guard laid hands on Peter and John. What a difference when the world lays hands and God's people lay hands. We bring healing and the people who don't know Christ bring sorrow. And they laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day. And did you expect that if you start bringing healing to people by the laying on of hands that suddenly you're going to have so many new friends and everybody's going to love you. <laughs> that isn't the truth. Even in Christianity, 
when we get into talking about miracles and people aren't used to really recognizing the scriptures for what they actually say, uh, there are those who will simply want to never call you a Christian again. And that's the, the walls come up in certain denominations and certain what I call abominations. Uh, they short circuit, they cut away what could happen in God in so many people because they keep them trapped in an idea that all that Jesus did was bring them fire insurance. They will get to heaven one day if they just follow the plan and often it's the pastor's plan. Forgive me if you're a pastor who's been like that, but please think that through. I'm not trying to insult you. I'm trying to help you understand that this is truth. How can we say the word is truth and then cut out any scriptures that we don't really want to look at? They laid hands on them and put them in jail until the next day for it was already evening. So they've been actually preaching to the crowd, Peter and John had, for quite some time before they were arrested. But the news spread back to the, to the temple guard and to the Sadducees and all of them came up to get them and uh, to stop them from doing what they were doing. But many of those who had heard the message believed. Did I say that Christ from heaven was smiling over this? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he was. For the first time, now the disciples were saved. Those that were in the upper room were saved, New Testament style, born again. Power of the Holy Spirit is poured out on them and at Pentecost. And now the joy of the Lord is their strength. And Christ starts watching through his people, the body of Christ. You're the body of Christ. You're the mouth of Christ. And if you don't tell someone that they need Jesus Christ, or help them to see their need for Jesus Christ and then bring them to Christ. You're missing the call on your life. You're missing what your life, your Christian life is for. It isn't so that you'll get to heaven. It is so that you can bring heaven to others, so that you can bring healing to others, so that you can bring wholeness to others. I'm so full of flaws as a human, and I don't like those flaws in me, but they're there. You're so full of flaws as a human, maybe less than mine, but they're there. And so it is that God says, don't get caught up in yourself, get caught up in Christ. This whole Christian life is to be lived for him, not for you. And it's to do the works of God. But many of those who had heard the message believed. And the number of the men came to be about 5,000. Woohoo! 5,000 people received the Lord. 5,000 people were born again. This is the beginning of the army of God, not to destroy, but to heal. This is a different army than a, a fighting army. This is an army of love. This is an army of salvation. This is an army to bring healing and wholeness and life to people who were lost in darkness until Christ transferred them from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. On the next day, the rulers and elders and scribes were gathered together in Jerusalem and Annas, the high priest, whoa, there's the highest ranking spiritual leader of the day. Annas, the high priest, was there. And Caiaphas and John and Alexander and all who were of, highly, uh, of high priestly descent. When they had placed them in the center, they began to inquire, by what power or in what name have you done this? And then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, don't miss that, 
baptism in the Holy Spirit, he, he had the Holy Spirit in him and upon him. And Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and elders of the people, if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man, <laughs> I was arrested because a sick man got healed. And I know I'm not a doctor, but I know the great physician. <laughs> if we are on trial today for a benefit done to a sick man as to how this man has been made well, let it be known to all of you and to all of the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead by this name, this man stands here before you in good health. It, 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 it's so important to understand that. It wasn't them. You don't heal anybody. I can't heal anybody. But we know a name. It's not magic, but it is supernatural. That when we speak the name of Jesus, let me read that again. Let it be known to all of you and to all the people of Israel and to every one of you that's watching that by the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, remember he had lived in Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. By this name, this man stands here before you in good health. I have more to share, but I just want to simply say to you, are you the light of the world? That's what Jesus said, that he is the light of the world. And then he said, now you are the light of the world. Go ye into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Are you sharing the good news of Christ or keeping it locked within the walls of your church? Are you afraid that you'll be arrested? You might be. Are you afraid that you'll be put to death? Peter and Peter was, and I mean, he wasn't afraid. Peter was put to death. And so was the Apostle Paul, 64 AD, beheaded. But, but the love of Christ is meant to be shared, my friend. I know that right now I live in a land a little safer, but it's getting harder. A little safer to share the name of Christ with people. And some of you live in lands where to share it could mean death very quickly. Be wise in how you share it, but share it outside the walls of your church. Remember, you are the church. The rest is just a building called the church. Remember this too. Jesus is your protector. Much more important than that. Jesus loves you.